Well, buckle up because this video is packed with ideas. But before we get started, we have to set the tone. I want to introduce the concept of a lifestyle business. This is the kind of business where lifestyle comes first and the business that we build is to support that lifestyle and to give us the freedom to enjoy that lifestyle. Because personally, I don't want to grow a multi six figure business at the sake of my freedom and my personal time. Okay, so with the purpose of achieving this, I built the four systems that I'm gonna show you in this video. Let's get into them. And also I'm gonna be showing them in the order in which I build them for my own business. Okay, so the very first system that I ever built for my business was the content creation system. Back then when I started, no one knew about me, no one knew the skills that I had and I needed to prove them. I needed to prove that I was worthy of being hired. And this is what I do in this YouTube channel. In fact, more than 80% of my leads and my clients come through this YouTube channel. But creating content and mostly here on YouTube requires of so many different actions. And if I want to be consistent, I need it to create a content creation system. And this is what I'm gonna show you right now. Here I have the different content creation systems that I have, but we're gonna be focusing on YouTube because it's the, the one that is more hard. So basically what I have done this is I have defined which are the different statuses for each of my videos. And then I have created views such as this one or this one to manage the pipeline of videos. But then what's cool about this is that since all this process is standardized, whenever a video is ready to be worked on, I have this little automation over here that creates all the subtasks that I need for each of the videos. And then they're going to appear over here within the video. Then inside of each of the tasks, here for example, I have the script of this very video. So everything is fully organized and all the information that I want to see about a particular video, it is over here. This also allows me to share all of this with my video editor, for example, so he can also understand which videos are coming his way and when are we publishing them. And by the way, I keep using the same template that I've been using for the past three years. And I recorded a video about this system long time ago, but I'm going to leave in the description of this video the template that I that I use. OK, so this was system number one. And this allowed me to start getting some clients. But then I ran into the next issue. I needed to onboard all those clients and I needed to fulfill the service that I promised to these clients. And in the beginning, when I had one or two clients, this was not a big deal. I could do everything manually without a system, didn't really matter. But when I started to grow, this when I started to feel the anxiety that things were falling through the cracks, that I was forgetting what I need to do with client A because I was focused on client D and everything started to become a little bit messy. So what I did is, well, since I already had a little bit of experience fulfilling clients and onboarding them, I could start creating those systems. And the next system that I created was the onboarding system because all the steps that I did for all my clients during the onboarding process were kind of the same. So I decided to automate the whole thing. So what I did is in Notion, I created a database for all my clients with different statuses. And then when I change the status for each of the clients or leads in this case, this is going to trigger different kinds of automations. So for example, let's say that after being in a call with one lead, he decides to become a client. And this is where the onboarding process starts. Because I didn't say before, but also one of my objectives was so that the client, once they have paid, they feel completely home and that I want to confirm that they have made the right decision by hiring me. So the onboarding process to me, it was very important. So what I did is once I bring the client to contract sent, this will kickstart the whole onboarding process. And in the back end, what is going to happen is that they're going to receive by email a contract for our service, depending on which kind of service they purchase, they're going to receive one contract or another. By the way, I build this in make.com and the software that I'm using for contracts is eSignatures, which is very cheap. You just pay by the contracts that you send and it integrates very well with Make and with Zapier, which are the two automation tools that I use. And once they receive the contract, then the next step once they've signed it is to pay. So this is also Automated. This is going to send after the contract has been signed. He is going to receive an email with a payment link. Once he has paid, he's going to receive all the onboarding sequence. Look, it's 24 steps. And this is going to do everything that we need to onboard the client. It's going to create the Google Drive folder to share our recordings. 
create the Slack channel, send an email, update their, their recording notion. This is going to do everything. And this alone saved me so much mental space because every time that I close the client, I would just had to click one button and the whole process was completely automated. Oh, and by the way, I noticed that only 15% of you watching this video are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you want to help more people to find freedom through their businesses, please consider subscribing right now because also this is going to give me a boost in my ego and it's going to make me create more of these videos and make them even more valuable day after day. So please consider subscribing. Now, what happened after I created this onboarding system? Well, the problem was no longer in the onboarding, but the problem was in the fulfilling. I had too many things to do for too many clients and I didn't have a system for that. So what I did is go back to the drawing board, standardize my offering and always do very similar things to every one of my clients because I already had the experience and I already knew what they always needed. So this allowed me to create what is the third system that I'm going to introduce, which is the client fulfillment system. So for this first, I needed to create this diagram over here. This contains all the different tasks that I'm going to be doing for a particular client over time. And then what I did is the same as what I did with my YouTube channel. I started creating all the tasks automatically at every step of the way. And even I didn't do this with my own clients, but I did it for another one of my clients. We could even trigger this automatically. And what do I mean by this? Because I didn't explain it very well. Let's say that all the actions that we take for a particular client are taken according to when we started working with them. And we know that on day seven, we do these kind of things or on day 14, we do these other things on day 21, we do these other things and all of this can be automated. So every day seven of a client, the list of tasks get created every day 14, the list of tasks get created. And when we implemented that into his business, because he had a lot of clients, it made such a big difference because they didn't need to do anything. They just needed to wait for the task to be created and their team will just start executing on them. So the power that is in this kind of system in standardizing and then automating the creation of all the tasks needed is humongous. No kidding. And then finally, once I had these three main systems created, it was time for me to start delegating some of my tasks. But then I figured out that if I were to hire, I will need to spend a lot of time teaching someone how to do stuff. And I didn't want to do that. So what did I do instead? I created a documentation system. The purpose of having documents inside of our company is to hold all the knowledge that our company has. And in my case, this was all the processes, all the how to's of all the tasks that I wanted to delegate. I understand that we could create a thousand of different documents, but I would recommend you to only start documenting those processes that you want to start outsourcing. So in my case, for example, this was uploading all my expenses to my finance software and I created the whole process over here and then I hired a VA to do the process. Guess how long it took me to train him? Nothing. He just needed to read this and that is it. And what will happen if I stop working with this VA? I can hire another one and I will send him the same document. And what is best about this is that once you start outsourcing these kind of tasks, you can also tell the new hire to keep improving the SOPs because maybe when I created the first version, I forgot something. Something was not very clear. So all these documents are going to keep iterating until they are crystal clear. And then what I started doing, remember that the previous system was the service fulfilling of my clients and that this was going to create tasks automatically. So what we can do is to link those tasks automatically as well to the documentation that explains how to do them. So not only the tasks are going to now be created automatically, also how to do them are going to go with them and we can assign it to whatever team member we want. And that is it. They will be able to do the thing. And all of this is going to happen again automatically. So this has been the backbone of what I've been building for my latest clients and what has allowed them to start delegating every part of the business that they didn't want to be part of. So if you want to have a chat on how we can do the same for your business, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video where you can book a call with me and we will review your case together. So well, that is it for this video, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.